Good evening all, welcome to the May 3rd, 2022 business meeting of the Board of Education. I need a motion for the call to order. Motion. I need a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, for anybody who's not aware of the emergency exits, we have them behind you and then to the rear of the <laughs> tables here. Um, I need a motion for the approval of order of agenda, please. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we will go with the clerk's report, Christine. Thank you. We can do a consent agenda for 2A to 2B. Be it resolved that the Board of Education accept the minutes of the business meeting held April 12, 2022. And be it resolved that the Board of Education accepts the minutes of the special meeting held April 27, 2022. Uh, I need a motion, please. Motion. I need a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Public comment speakers will be rec recognized who wish to address the Board on agenda items only. Okay, then we are going to start with our student of the month. Who would like to go first? Mr. Shug? Absolutely. All right. Good evening. Uh, please join me in welcoming Hampton Bay's Middle School's Student of the Month for April, Alejandra Montoya. Alejandra is one of our sixth grade students. Alejandra is a voracious reader of the fantasy genre and explained to me that she mostly enjoys her reading in ELA class because she is able to use her imagination, writing creative stories, and self-selecting books she loves to read. In fact, a book she recommends we all read is called Wings of Fire. It's a fantasy story series of nearly 15 books featuring dragons. Beyond the school day, Alejandra enjoys being a member of our middle school student council. Among her reasons for enjoying this group are that she participates in school-wide school culture building through our RSVP program run through the National Association of Secondary School Principals Association. Uh, this is focused on raising students' voices and participation in middle school and our student leaders working towards achieving a no place for hate as well distinction later this year. Beyond the school day, Alejandra is an artist specializing in drawing both people and dragons, either digitally or using pen. She also plays soccer as a defender and a midfielder, and she has several pets at home, among them a pet mouse and a pet chihuahua, which she enjoys caring for at home. When Alejandra graduates high school, she aspires to study to become a veterinarian because of her love for animals and her dedication to helping them. In fact, she currently is exploring the Royal Veterinary College located in London, England. In terms of advice for new middle school students, Alondra suggests this, get out of your comfort zone. Whether it's learning something new, meeting some new, or trying something new, she says to start small and go from there. Congratulations to you, Alejandra, on this recognition, and we look forward to many great things to come at HBMS and in your bright future. Congratulations. Okay, Dr. Greenberg. Good evening, parents, um, Board of Education members, superintendent, and fellow colleagues. The Student of the Month award goes to Maisie Placas. Come on up. Well, the Student of the Month 
came from the physical education department. Maisie is a great scholar who has challenged herself this year by taking many courses as well as AP environmental science. Maisie has been on a high honor roll every quarter of her freshman, since her freshman year. Aside from her academic accolades, Maisie is an outstanding athlete. It was actually Ms. Angasser, who teaches fitness and dance class, who nominated Maisie. What is great about fitness and dance class is one could excel and enjoy it regardless of the level of experience. Happens to be that Maisie is a captain of our cheerleading team. Cheerleading is a fascinating sport because of sheer determination, athleticism, discipline, communication, and trust, which are absolute requirements. Not only Maisie is responsible for her own routine, but also for the safety of her teammates, who are often suspended or flung on the air. As a team captain, she is the team leader to the cheerleaders, making sure that nerves and emotions are in check and everyone on the A game. The combination of Maisie's academic and athletic success has been routinely recognized as she has been awarded the Old County Award every year since she's been with the team. Maisie also participates in track and field and she's a pole vaulter, which is, as you know, involves propelling yourself through the air at high speeds. Maisie's self-discipline can also be seen not just in her academic and athletics, but also in other areas of her life. For example, we talked extensively about the different types of diets that are geared to different needs of the sport and the care that needs to be taken when making sure that the body and athlete heal properly. In terms of colleges, we have some time. Maisie is thinking about East Carolina University and the University of New Haven. In preparing her resume of a scholar, a sport athlete, and a seasoned cheerleader, Maisie has been focusing on facing her fears and pushing her boundaries and expanding her tumbling capacity, which, as you could guess, includes more propelling through air, often backwards. Overall, Maisie is very deserving of this award. We are very proud to call her our own and looking forward to many significant milestones as we can't wait to cheer her on as she reaches and passes them. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. Uh, it seems we don't have our elementary yet. Okay. Um, we will take a quick five minute break and then we will proceed unless she shows up. Okay. All right.
Okay, all well, we do have our elementary school candidate here. Testing, testing. Ms. Meyer? Good evening. I'd like to ask one of my second grade teachers, Mrs. Ham, to please come up and join me. It's our pleasure to recognize the Hampton Bays Elementary School April student of the month, Mike De Los Santos Vasquez. Mike, come on up. <laughs> Mike is a very respectful, hardworking, helpful student. He always follows directions, tries his best in and out of the classroom, and is a great friend to everyone. Although he's very quiet in school, he's a wonderful role model for his peers. Mike's an absolute pleasure to have in second grade. He loved going to the STEAM lab with Mrs. Sumwalt. His favorite unit of study was the frog unit. He also loved the glow lab in Dr. D's lab. Mike is the process of working on a great Mother's Day gift in school. I came very close to completely ruining the surprise with my big mouth. <laughs> so something good's coming, but we're not gonna tell you what, okay. During his, during his free time, you can always find Mike practicing his, his jump shot on the basketball court. He hopes to play for the Bayman Varsity basketball team one day. After completing his studies, Mike wants to become an executive chef, chef and open his own restaurant one day in Hampton Bays. Mike has assured us we will never need a reservation, even during the summer season. We, we are proud to have nominated Mike for April Student of the Month. There's no one who deserves it more. Congratulations, Mike. Congratulations, Mike. Let's have a round of applause. <clears throat> Good evening, board members watching at home and our leadership team and, and colleagues here tonight. So tonight is uh, the budget hearing, the official budget hearing for uh, the 2022-23 budget season. Uh, and the purpose of that is to hear from the community uh, comments or, question, or take questions on um, the proposed budget, which will be voted on May 17th. The guts of the budget have not changed since the April meeting. And uh, so tonight I'm gonna push through the slides because not much has changed. But I did bring uh, with me uh, the slides and presentation that we used last week with the Hampton Bay Civic Association. So uh, this is what we call roadshow season. And Larry and I make uh, our way around the community to organizations like the beautification, the PTAs, the, the staff, Civic Association, Rotary, Kiwanis, Alliance groups in the community to try and get the word to as many people as possible about what the budget proposal entails and uh, to just uh, publicize that Tuesday, May 17th is the budget vote. So I'll go through the presentation tonight um, and then Mr. Springer, you can open the hearing and take any questions and comments as well. So uh, this slide just continues to live with us each month. Uh, COVID-19, we have shifted into that endemic phase. Uh, we're averaging about uh, a case a day. You know, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's zero, but ones and twos here, um, it still circulates in our community um, with a, a contagious strain, but what we are seeing is that uh, folks are back on their feet and they're back with us in that, in, on that day six. Um, and we continue to have lots of tools at our disposal, including um, natural immunity from people who were previously infected, those who have, um, that are vaccinated and boosted, and then we have a number, uh, we have a countless number of at-home tests, so faculty, staff, students, um, who need a test, uh, we make sure that they have them in the home if they've been either exposed um, or someone else in the house is sick so they can, they can monitor that as well. 
Um, as a reminder, the school, I'll shift to school budget presentation, the tax levy is zero. The tax levy increase is zero at this point. Um, taxpayers should see a slight decrease in their school tax rate in 2022-23. By comparison, I, and I went back into my own filing cabinet and pulled out my own school tax bills as a Hampton Bays resident, in 2015-16 the tax rate uh, per thousand for school taxes was $13.34 per $1,000 that your house is assessed. And in 22-23 school year, it is anticipated to be $12.19. So over that, that eight period, uh, a 9% decrease in the school tax rate. Doesn't necessarily mean you paid less in taxes because your assessment might have gone up or you might have improved your property. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the proportion that um, we're paying has, has gone down in the school tax rate. School tax levy lives at a 0% increase for the second year in a row due to foundation aid increases at an unprecedented level. Governor Cuomo and then continued by Governor Hochul and the legislatures of both sessions uh, last year and this year's session committed to fully fund foundation aid over a three-year period. Last year we went from 44% fully funded to 60%. This year, our state aid run is 60%, 80%, and if the state of New York continues its commitment and upholds that commitment, the f next year would be 80 to 100%. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time, so we don't take anything for granted. And so this budget was built with that conservative, uh, conservative approach in mind that at this point we need to, to really make sure that those funding commitments at those big levels um, uh, maintain themselves. So that's like an uh, estimated 20% uh, increase in state aid. Uh, districts that are considered fully funded and have been fully funded for a number of years received only a 3% increase. So Hampton Bays is receiving something that is not going to happen every year. So I, I think we need to say that, and I'll say it again. This is not something we should expect every year, a 20% increase in state aid. So we, take, we enjoy it while we have it right now. We can take care of making sure that we can sustain programs and staff and take care of some one-time expenses. But if we were at the fully funded end of state aid, we'd be getting a 3% increase. So we wouldn't be having that same conversation. We hope that the legislature thank Assemblyman Thiel and Senator Palumbo for continuing to make sure that that's an advocacy point and, and top of pay for them, that districts like Hampton Bays get their full funding for foundation aid. We continue to, our, our enrollment continues to be just at about 2,046 students. That is just a, a slightly higher than where we live. That's not, that's not the Bordy Barn right there. That's where we are in 2021-22. Just at about, just a little above uh, 2,000 students. But you can see as a district, we're expecting to uh, come down in enrollment in the next few years. So we have to keep that in mind as, as we look forward. The elementary school is gonna continue to basically live in the atmosphere that it lives right now. The, the, the size of those classes are anywhere between 125 and 140 students. We anticipate the incoming kindergarten class to look roughly like what it looks like now, which is about 126, 127 students. We're graduating 201 students, so that's why Hampton Bay's High School lives so much higher than that. But over the next few years, as those little ones become big ones, that number's gonna come down. So on the whole, the district is decreasing. Um, that gives this district an opportunity to look into the future, and as staff retire and enrollment comes down, um, or enrollment comes down before staff retire or leave um, opportunities to imagine new programs, new opportunities for kids, or reductions in force uh, based on, on, on what's necessary uh, at that time. But there are lots of, you ask anyone on our leadership team, if you had an idea to add to the district, uh, to your school program, uh, do you have one? And they'll say, how much time do you have? Because I have lots of ideas and lots of goals in the programs uh, for our kids uh, to make sure they're competitive, 21st century learners, um, and, and so uh, it's an exciting era for us to be entering. Um, over the last 20 years, we were largely an enrollment-driven 
school with budget you know, program needs based on enrollment. We're entering a new phase where we can maintain a lot of the great new cool electives and programs and enrichment and remediation that we offer, but then also maybe envision new things for our kids. This year's budget and what we're proud of this year, we've leaned really into computer science. Mr. Meyer mentioned Dr. D's Glow Lab, the coolest place at Hampton Bays Elementary School. That continues with computer science and introductions to computer program computer programming and Amazon Future Engineers program at the middle school and then on to um, uh, computer science and the introduction of Python uh, computer coding in 22-23. You've heard Mr. Uh, Carlson's leading initiative um, district-wide and it lives in both the middle and the high school uh, around New Jersey, a partnership with Stony Brook University to help students develop critical thinking skills to judge the reliability and credibility of news and information. Uh, it combats four challenges that kids face that we all face in 2022. And that's the speed at which information is, is uh, traveling, volume of information that we are consuming as individuals, the shareability of that, so clicking, clickbait, right? You can share things super quick. And then people who shop for, uh, because we're predisposed to seek likeness, and we find news, we find news sources, we find information that resembles what we already think and it reinforces what we think. And then our algorithms and social media push more of that to us. And so news literacy, the approach is to teach kids to be critical consumers of news and look at things from a balanced lens, do what's called lateral review, find an article and try to find bias in it and identify what that might be and find the other side so they can draw their own critical conclusions to that. Vocational education, I won't spend a lot of time on. You've heard me talk um, endlessly over the last few months about how uh, proud we are of the Hospitality Academy at Hampton Bays. What that, that mirrors what we do during the day with hospitality, tourism management, culinary. We're looking forward to adding baking and pastry in the next couple of years uh, with um, a new hire tonight. Um, Chef Weiss is retiring, and so we're, we have a great young replacement right from the industry. Um, Connor Curtis, also a Hampton Bay's alum, so super excited about that. We continue to um, invest in and support early childhood education right down the hallway here, and uh, a new entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial class, Virtual Enterprise International. Uh, we taught in our business department. Uh, West Hampton Beach has a nationally renowned program, so we're going to learn from West Hampton Beach, our friends um, west of Jones Road, and uh, try to replicate that opportunity for our kids who are studying business and finance and want to go into that sector when they grow up as well. Uh, we continue with a robust ENL and bilingual program from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade and uh, bringing back um, FLESS in grade 5 and 6, reintroducing foreign language in 5 and 6. Great programming K through 4 and then students pick back up with their foreign language in 7 and 8. So we had that gap there and this budget allows us to fill that gap and offer that opportunity for kids. Recently, uh, we were awarded the, Na the National Association of Music Merchants Best uh, Communities for Music Education. Uh, this is the third year in a row that we have um, earned that award. And then I'll just mention our college and career acceptances. In addition to four of our graduates anticipated to uh, serve our nation in the military this year, we have kids starting their career everywhere from Suffolk Community College to continue figuring out what they want to do or get their start locally, all the way to Harvard, Cornell, Olin School of Engineering, UPenn, Michigan, UConn, virtually all the SUNYs, RIT. Uh, the list goes on and on with substantial financial packages for these kids. So sending kids off from hand these high school to very, very competitive national programs, um, and so we're very proud of that. Student wellness, we've continued to, to talk about um, and prioritize, particularly coming out of COVID. It was important to us going into a pandemic, but coming out of that, um, we've, we've met Ray, love on a leash. Um, I have a dog at home, and I heard on uh, Mrs. Eaton, I heard my son telling Ray's handler, too bad we have a dog at home, because I'd like to take Ray. I thought, man, Ray trumps Truman. So um, it's been a hit. It's been a huge hit. Uh, just a really fun 
kind, compassionate aspect for kids all the way up into middle school and the high school and our focus on the food pantry, Katie's Closet, uh, wellness through physical activity with our partners at Hill Street Boxing in Southampton as well. And on May 14th, we have a great community event here at the school, a cornhole tournament, and all the proceeds are going to go to support Food for Thought, which is our uh, food pantry here at Hampton Bays High School shared with you uh, the great success of the Hospitality Academy. Uh, we had a job fair on April 23rd over spring break uh, where more than 50 individuals interviewed with uh, Canoe Place, Inn and Cottages and 20 other um, organizations and a number of people walked out with jobs. Um, career pathways for them uh, here locally with great businesses and great local, uh, great paying jobs as well. So just a couple of photos there and uh, this, uh, this is, of course is available on our social media on, on, on our YouTube. So the budget uh, that has a 0% tax levy increase um, does have a 3.9% spending increase. Why is that? Because of that significant increase in foundation aid that I mentioned before. Uh, so $2.2 million more in state aid, and we made that commitment to our community over the last 15 years that said every, every dollar that comes from money isn't a dollar that has to be spent by the local taxpayer. We can still continue to invest, we can still continue to improve and spend more, but it's not our local money and our local property taxpayer. It's Albany making that commitment to us. Um, and if it's a dollar that comes to him, if it's a dollar that goes elsewhere to another district, it's one that doesn't come to him to pay. That's why that advocacy is so important. So you can see a history of our tax levy increase year to year. Over the last 10 years, uh, 12 years, uh, that is an average of 2.2% um, increases in spending, modest levels, modest increases, uh, certainly brought down by the last couple of years of levy increases. Our spending increases are about 2.5%, 0.6% over the last, uh, uh, over that same period of time, which goes back to 2010, 2011 school year. You can see on this last uh, graph there that the dark purple is the proportion of spending that comes from local taxpayers, our property taxes. That lavender color um, is the share of state aid. And then the pink color at the top is hard to see, is our smaller stream of funding, which is federal funding. We had the biggest pink that we've had in the last 12 years because of the COVID dollars, the federal COVID relief spending that the Congress and passed and the president signed. Those are use it and then lose it dollars. So these are the one-time expenses for uh, enrichment teachers, AIS teachers, uh, some capital improvements that we're making uh, as well. Um, but once those dollars are used, uh, they don't come back again, and if we don't use them, we lose them. So it's important to make that those expenditures right now. Um, these are the same, same slides that we used in April. So what I will do is jump to uh, the budget information. Absentee ballots are available from our district clerk. This is Pendalfo. You can download the link. You can download the application. It is a process where you have to apply for the ballot. You get the application to us. We send you the ballot. You have to send it back. So those who are not going to be present on, April, on May 17th need to plan ahead of time uh, to, uh, to vote so that their ballot is counted and received by 5 p.m. on May 17th. May 17th from 7 to 9 in the municipal gymnasium, you can vote in person and COVID protections will be available. We'll be spaced out through the entire gymnasium, sanitizer, mask, fresh pens, uh, all of that will be there for those wanting to take advantage of those. Two budget propositions, number one, to authorize the school budget that I just went quickly through, and then proposition two is to use, if there is fund balance at the end of the year, we know that in October when the auditors come and close our books, uh, if there is fund balance at the end of the year, uh, does the community give us permission to use up to $300,000 for minor repairs and renovations? What does that look like? That looks like um, a, a, a toilet room, a bathroom in the life skills classroom next summer. We can do those little projects uh, that don't require a bond, that don't require an increase, an, another ask for an increase in taxes in the community. We have uh, three individuals in the community running for two seats on the Board of Education. Rich Ionelli and then uh, Rich Joslin and Kevin Springer are both running for re-election uh, for a three-year term that would begin July 1st, 2022, uh, and then go for three school years after that. Um, 
couple of dates that are ahead of us tonight is the budget hearing and then the budget newsletter will be delivered to residents. Uh, we, find, we signed off final authorization on that this morning, so it'll be printed and mailed in the next week, and then followed by a six-day budget notice. Uh, we, the inaugural cornhole tournament is on Saturday, May 14th. Uh, we invite the community on Thursday, May 19th, to our enlisted in academy ceremony, partner with Southampton and West Hampton, and uh, hope for a sunny day because that'll be held at beautiful Agawam Park. So it's a it's a great ceremony to recognize our three high schools kids who are making the commitment to serve our nation in the military. It's trying. It's a scary time in the world, and so we thank we want to be the first to thank them for their service. Um, at this point, um, aside from that. Um, the only other uh, mention I'll make tonight in my report is that we have our UPK. So Mrs. Corridor is here, who is our district registrar. She is processing uh, kids who move in the district, getting records ready for our graduates, meeting our incoming kindergartners, and e meeting our pre-K. So she has not stopped since January, and we thank her for getting us to some great little ones who are going to be here uh, in pre-K next year, as well as kindergartners coming in. So Mrs. Corridor, thank you for for making sure that the first face families see when they come to Hampton Bay is professional, kind, and welcoming. So thank you. That was one breath. <laughs> I will take any questions from the audience or the board as you open the hearing, Mr. Spring. Any questions? I think we're okay. Okay, you just have to open the hearing. Okay, in that case, I will close the hearing and I need a motion, please. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thank Clemson. You. All right, that said, we will do a consent agenda from 4A to 4D. Need a motion, please. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Um, we'll do on our own if there is no questions. I need a motion. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, consent agenda from 6A to 6K, unless we have any questions or concerns, I need a motion. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, let's see. Okay, we need the approval of the Board of Education meetings schedule for 2022-23. And it's a consent agenda from 7A to 7C. I need a motion, please. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, then we will move on to our universal pre-K. Good evening again. So uh, we have 36. Everyone's favorite night as we welcome our newest students to uh, Hampton Bay School District. We have 36 spots tonight, which is great news because every student who's in the lottery will get a spot. So we're simply calling names in order to really determine AM or PM. First student chosen gets a spot, cho first choice about whether an AM or a PM spot. So great news, everybody's gonna get a spot, which hasn't always been the case in past years. Um, Again, the only thing we're really calling for tonight is to go in AM, PM order. Once all the AM spots are gone, then we'd move on to a P PM spot. So that's really what we're calling for tonight. But we're very excited to have these 36 spots, and we're very excited to welcome our newest students. Without any further ado, Mr. T. All right, Mr. Meyer and everybody, we have 36 contained names in here. I'm going to spin the magic wheel, not once, not twice, but three times tonight because I'm lucky. And we're going to I'm going to pull out five label that one through five and then we will call the names in numerical order good luck to all of you future UK parents there may be mr for some parents outside unless they left they will they were excited to be here they hear the name called so if they're out there we can invite them in And here they are. Are you ready? ITBS. Yeah, I think yeah, you've, been, you've been ready. Right. Do you want me to 
Blair Clark is our first draft choice of the night. Number two, uh, um, Amelia Faber. Number three, Ethan Barrios. Student number four, Aika Fardo. Say that again, Mr. T. Aika Fardo. I think their Valencia, Valencia is the Valencia Fajardo. Got it. And student number five, Owen Cox. That was Owen Crops. Oh, Crops. <laughs> See that, Steen? That was pretty good, though. That, that was very good. Nice. We can hold Very good. good. Thank you. Student number seven. Taylor Mudd. Uh, Munn, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Munn. Student number eight. Samia. Oh boy. Less. Lejnenin. Say that again? Lejnenin. I like that. That was well said. A couple of graduates. Yes. Student number nine. Lo I think it's Logan Michael Buffalino. And student number ten. Eden Cruz. You're doing a great job. Oh, thank you. Gemma Collins. Student number 13. Mateo Ramos. Student number 14. Andy Rohano. Student number 15. Matthew Bonilla. Is that Oreo? I can't. Aurelio? Just have oh. Matthew Bonilla. Okay, I have an Aurelio, so it's Matthew Bonilla then. Okay. Right there, Christine. Number 
Jamerson Hughes. Number 17. Nicholas Podoya. Student number 18. James Kelly. Student number 19. Isabella. Hernandez. Student number twenty. Kaylin Christensen. Student number 21. Leo Bergman. Student number 22. Nathan Avalos, student number 23. Daniel Lucas Bonilla, student number 24. Amanda Fajardo. Oh, Yachi! All right! <laughs> oh, Amanda! <laughs> Student number 25. Isabella Taylor. Student number 26. Look at the smile. She's so happy. <laughs> Makes the whole night, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mateo Prez. Student number 27. Paige Terza. Student number 28, Naomi Barrios. Student number 29, Alex Guevara Sanchez. Jocelyn Gutierrez Salinas. Student 31. Matthew Newvin. Or Noonan. Is that Noonan? Noonan. 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 Okay. Noonan. Student number 32.
Phoebe Gomez. Student number 33. Maria Vasquez. Student number 34. Cadence Boy. Student number 35. Samantha Ku. I can't see her. It's like Kuji. 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 C U J I. Yeah. I'm sorry. And last but not least, student number 36, weighing in at 20 pounds. <laughs> Madison Urbano. <laughs> and then we have a magic ticket. I'm not sure what this is for. It might be Powerball. So if it is, I will just split it amongst everybody. And that should do it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. 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 Okay, thank you for that. Um, we will now open for public comment. Any persons may address the Board of Education on matters of interest or concerns. The Board President will recognize all speakers. Time limits may be imposed based upon agenda needs. Okay, since we have nothing, then we will, I need a motion to adjourn the meeting, please. Motion. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes, meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Get home safely. Thank you. Thank you.